Connecting Classrooms to Congress is one of our flagship research initiatives, and we are so pleased to be bringing together Congressman Derek Kilmer, representing Washington's 6th Congressional District, and you students from Kingston High School. Thanks, Amy. Uh, great to be with everybody. Um, I didn't realize I signed up for hard questions. I got to rethink this whole thing. Um, it's uh, it's great to be with you. Um, just to give you a sense of, uh, first, me and the district I represent, I grew up in the district. I grew up in Port Angeles. I was in high school right around the time the timber industry took it on the chin. And so a bunch of my friends' parents lose their jobs and a bunch of my neighbors lose their jobs. And that really altered the trajectory of my adult life. I went off to college and I studied, uh, in a nutshell, I studied economic development policy. I looked at challenges facing timber towns in Washington state, trying to figure out what do you do when the main industry goes away. And then did the same thing in graduate school. I worked for a few years in business and then a few years in economic development, basically trying to figure out how do we get more jobs in our area and then got grumpy. I kept finding myself saying, gosh, you know what government does and doesn't do sure impacts our ability to grow jobs. Next thing I knew I was serving in elective office first in the state legislature and now in Congress. You know, young people have been very active in trying to drive some of that action on climate. Um, we've seen young people speak up in really big ways. And so let me stop there. I'm eager to hear whatever questions are on your minds. Um, so I'll open the floor to you. I just want to say welcome to Kingston High School. My name is Ava, and I was wondering, as someone who grew up in the Olympic Peninsula, how did your childhood affect your policies on the environment? Yeah. Thanks for the question, Ava. You know, I, I think one of the things that we understand in our region is that the environment is not just important to our quality of life. It's a big part of our economy too. You know, think about the number of people whose jobs and livelihoods are tied to our environment. You know, anybody, you know, and there are 3,200 people in the district I represent whose jobs are tied to shellfish growing, for example, to the shellfish industry. You know, they depend on clean water. Um, they also depend on us doing something about the climate crisis because ocean acidification is affecting how oysters form their shells, just as an example. We have seen far more severe wildfires that impact the health of forests and the health of the timber industry. Um, you know, our private landowners are seeing massive wildfires that are just devastating in terms of future jobs. Um, I had a question about greenhouse gases are one of like the leading reasons in climate change, like everywhere. And I wanted to know if there's anything we could do to improve like public transportation to decrease those? Uh, yeah. So the short answer is, yeah, absolutely. Right. So part of, you know, I mentioned there's these big bills. The Inflation Reduction Act is one of them. Um, there was also a bipartisan infrastructure law that is one of them. If you look at those bills, they really try to take an approach to addressing the climate crisis that looks at th the entire economy. And that includes greenhouse gas emissions from every sort of sector of the economy, one of the biggest, to your point, is automobiles. And so part of these big bills is recognizing that emissions that come out of tailpipes is a very significant con contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. And that if we can, you know, sort of cut that off at the pass, that that can help um, be part of the solution to the climate crisis. question is, do you think that Washington should continue to use primarily hydroelectric energy despite the damage it causes to ecosystems? You know, it's a, the hydropower is a big slice of our energy production pie in the state of Washington. There is very substantial effort, and there's an article about it in the paper today, about research to try to mitigate the environmental impact of hydro. And the other big piece of this is, is climate action. Um, again, uh, we've got to balance where our energy comes from with the just urgent need for climate action, because if we care about these species, depending upon um, dirty sources of energy uh, isn't going to help uh, our environment either. 
Um, so assuming that we do make the switch to nuclear power, uh, how could those who support the decision help smooth the process of transition? Well, so I, I don't think I don't think our energy solution is going to be one thing, right? I think it's going to be a really diverse energy portfolio that includes solar and wind, geothermal, um, uh, hydroelectric, uh, nuclear, probably through the form of small modular reactors. And part of the way the federal government is sort of stepping into this void is to do a lot of research and to provide grant funding for um, uh, nuclear solutions that don't have a lot of the problems that existed in terms of sort of safety threats that um, existed previously. Uh, you know, every time I speak to a group of young people, I'm just reminded of like one, how smart you are, <laughs> two, how determined you are um, to make things better. You know, and that's how we make things better. The, the, you know, the issues that we talk today are really important to your future. And that is why it matters for your voices to be heard. And it's important for those of us in elective office, including in Congress, for us to listen. And I want you to remember something, no matter how challenging times may seem, change is possible. So again, stay involved, stay engaged, stay curious, and more importantly, stay hopeful. And, and um, please know that you have the capacity to make a difference.